tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Joe DeVito, Lori Palminteri, Kevin Ryan, Shane. This week's host, Sinbad. Gotham Comedy Live. All happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Sinbad. Gotham Comedy Live, baby, right here in the house. No, this, this is the first time I've been, this is beautiful. This is nice. I've never been to Gotham Club. I've never been to this comedy club. I've never done this show. I just, I'm telling you, man, this is, this is nice. I just want to say it's nice to be able to come back and, you know, see, at this age, I am now. <laughs> this is the age where people are like, oh, man, you know, I always loved you. I was a kid. It's a comic. I always wanted to be you. Uh, you're a living legend. I'm like, I'm almost dead. That means, like, you're dead. They start giving you awards. You ain't even done nothing. We won't give you the peace award. So we won't give you an award for what you mean to the children. I said, dude, I, got, I still got a job next week. I ain't dying. <laughs> but there's something about being older. Don't have it. I, you don't live till you're 50. I don't understand what that meant. When I was 30, like, yeah, you can be dead at 50. At 50, you start realizing, you're still young. Who's 50? Who said 50 and over? <laughs> See, look at my man. He looked at me. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny to you? <laughs> if you're blessed, you'll live to be 50. If you're blessed, you know, so my thing is, you know, my thing is, listen, 50 is, you're free for the first time. Are y'all married? Y'all just dating? Not dating? You, what, whoa, what is? I'm so, my bad, y'all. But this is a bad night. You handle bills, take you out? <laughs> See, they both did this. I made my pay. And look at him. I told you, man, don't. See, this is like a double date. Don't you have a friend? Yeah. Don't he have somebody? He can call somebody. <laughs> I'm glad we're getting it. I'm gonna help I'm gonna give you some old 50 old wisdom. This 50 old wisdom. When you're older, you ain't got fake this. When you're old, if it don't work out, you leave. When you're 20, 30, I don't know, you tell your friend, girl, I wanna break out, I don't know what to do. Just leave him. I don't know, I love it. When you're 50, he ain't got no insurance. <laughs> this ain't his house. I'm gone. <laughs> we don't need love. You don't need love at 50. At 50, you need somebody's shelter. You need shelter. You need food. You need your teeth fixed. See, when you're 20, you want love. I want somebody to love me for me. Like, you want, I want somebody to love for me. We don't know you. We don't know you. You'll never know her. You will never know her. Take it from me. You'll never know the woman you're with. You will never know the woman you're with because by the time you know her, she flips. And it's a new woman. That's why you don't have to cheat on her. You got five women in that. There's five women inside that one woman. And give each one a name. Give each one a name so when you come home, you can keep it together. Who's here today? It's Agnes. Damn. Damn. That way you can be like, you changed. No, he ain't changed. The other one came out. The other one popped out. See, at 50, I'm 58. I'm 58 years old. I'll be 59 this year, man. So, you know, you hope, you hope at 50, you wise. There are some dumb old people. I ain't gonna lie. You, there ain't nothing worse than being 60 and dumb. Be 60 and dumb, you just waste. You old and you dumb, you got nothing to offer. You got nothing to offer. You didn't learn nothing. How you live for 60 years and then look how slow you got to be? How slow? That was that kid in school? I knew it, I knew. Cause we all know somebody. Everybody here knows somebody. Look, everybody ain't made to make it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of y'all got, who got kids? They all not gonna be successful. All your children are not gonna be equally su successful. That's why you can't have just one. That's a jacked up situation. If you have one failure, you'll whoop that child, you'll be mad at that child. That's why in the 70s, we had big families. You got six, three gonna make it. Three gonna make it out. And the other three, like, when they ask about him, well, you know, you know, he, uh, you know he's trying to find himself. That's a, cold for, that's a cold word for I got a dumb child. When you say, I got a child finding themselves, you got a dumb child, how are they lost? They live at your house. If you got a child live at their house, how are they, how are they lost? And you gotta let you know which one your children stupid. You gotta let them know. Don't be lying to them. Don't say you can be anything you want to be. That's why we had that first week of American Idol. Cause someone didn't shut that down. Someone didn't shut that down. That when that child starts singing, no, no, no. That's not for you. That's not. That's not for you. Everybody can't be everything. Every child can't be special. And you gotta know when you got a slow child. And when you go to school and the teacher's sitting there, he's slow. We're all slow. Everybody in this family's slow. We don't want him at home. Please, can he stay in your class? 
I just found out I have ADHD. I didn't know all them years that people say you can't concentrate. I found out I'm glad they had no medication because in the 70s you didn't need medication. It was called get out my house, go outside and play. Get out my house. <laughs> So ADHD wasn't a big thing in the 70s because you played, but you played different. Like my father, we all had bikes in the 70s. My dad said, let him ride as long as he needs to ride to work it out. He ain't got to come home when the rest of y'all come home. One time I came home, three days, dad, three days. My dad understood me. Any teachers here? Any teachers? With math and ADHD is none of our fault. Don't do story problems. That's so stupid. Say it. Seven minus three. I don't need, there were seven apples. Somebody stole three apples. I got ADHD. I'm like this. Why'd you leave it to open? I'm... And then you're going to send me to the principal's office. And that's a legit question. That's a real question. There's a train going 30 miles an hour. There's a town 60 miles away. Why is he going so slow? He could have drove. Now I'm sitting at the principal's office with my dad coming up. What happened? People stealing apples and jumping on trains. Because of you. You have a problem with some of the kids? Some of the, some of the parents, right? Don't, don't sugarcoat it for the parents. Don't sh and if a parent is stupid, stop that parent conference. If you got the little stupid Johnny sitting here and the stupid parents show up like, oh, I see. My bad, never mind. He doing better than I thought he was. Don't worry about getting fired. Ain't nobody trying to take your job. This is a new generation. They can't teach. They can't, they have no tennis, man. They social. They text each other. What you doing? I'm sitting right next to you. What you? Y'all have no attention span whatsoever. Oh, did you see this? Look at, I'm gonna send it to you. I'm right here. Show it to me. Show it to me, man. Look at me. You ain't looking at me now. You're looking for your phone. What do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm a bartender. You're a bartender. So you're really a psychologist. Think about bartending, think about you sit and you serve liquor to drunk people and you let them drive drunk. How you feel? You knew he was drunk when he left. Huh? How you feel? Do you let them drive drunk or do you like, no man, you had enough? How you cut them off? How you cut a drunk person off? Look at these people. How you cut a drunk New York person off? I mean, how am I drink? Okay, cut me off. Give me a drink. How would you do it? Show me, show me. That's how you cut people off? You just don't look at him? I won't, he's not here. You ain't making no tips, are you? I will answer one question about anything for anybody here. I'll answer one question real fast. Anything that bothers your life, I will fix it in 13 seconds. One question, anybody. Something that bothers you about your man, life, woman. Because we don't like you. It's not deep. It ain't deep. Men are not deep. We don't have no ulterior plan. You should have me call you while we was having sex. If you want men to get you to do stuff, ladies, if you're married, you got a man, you say, you never talk to me, you never listen to me. When you got your man on top of you, who gonna take out that garbage? Daddy gonna take out that garbage? Daddy gonna take out that garbage. <laughs> if you want something from a man, you gotta do it while you got our attention. You can't walk in while I'm watching the game. Can we speak? The game's on! <laughs> what else? Time for one more question. That was too simple. <laughs> one more question. How do we make money? How huh? Money? How do we make money? You get jobs. <laughs> It's a very special crowd. A very special crowd. I see, I see who they let in. I was just trying, I was trying to get the temperature. Where are you call? Where the job's at? How you stop somebody from drinking? I don't know. That's your woman? No, I ain't got no. This gonna be a good show. Y'all stick around. We got some good stuff coming up, right? We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Joe DeVito is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. We got a very funny man coming up. Joe DeVito, he's got his debut comedy album on Rooftop Comedy. Give it up, Joe DeVito, y'all! Thank you! Thanks, guys. Good to see you. 
Good to see you guys. It's good to be back in New York. I, I don't know about you, sometimes I'm on that subway platform, I start thinking, maybe I should pee too. <laughs> doesn't smell like anyone's holding it in here at the West 4th Street station. <laughs> New York is so disgusting, you'll have this constant dialogue in your mind of, I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> The other day I was walking down 8th Avenue, I saw a giant dildo sticking out of a garbage can. And my first thought was, shouldn't that be in the recycling bin? Isn't that... It's disgusting. That's how we can tell who's visiting New York. We can pick you out. Yeah. Those are the people you see buying food from the street vendors. Good call. How suicidally hungry do you have to be? To suspend all logic and tell yourself, hey, you know what would be a good idea? How about a little street corner shish kebab? What do you think? Uh, whew, I could go for some meat of unknown origin that's been marinating in 8th Avenue truck exhaust for a few hours. And, oh, and I want it prepared by a man who's been in the country for 11 minutes. Can I get that full? You say he's gonna handle cash and my food? Well, what could go wrong? Not for everyone. I was in Midtown, I was outside one of those uh, sex shops, and I saw these two very touristy looking women staring into the window like this. And I thought, ooh, I gotta go see what these two fanny packs are up to. So I walk over, there's a sign in the window sex shop that says, butt plugs, 50% off. Uh, all sales final, I'm hoping. And these two women are staring, and one turns to the other and she goes, butt plug? What's that? What's that? What additional information do you need that's not included in the words butt and plug? That's the most aptly named product since the toothbrush. Now I'm used to that. I go to normal places, I get freaked out. I went to Houston, Texas. I didn't know that there were still cowboys. To me, that's like going to Philly and seeing Ben Franklin walk by. And this is Houston, Texas. These guys are the real deal. They got the boots and the big belt buckles. And when you see someone you've only heard about, you get very excited. I'm walking around Houston going, oh my God, look, cowboys. Just like in a John Wayne movie. They're wearing the hats and everything. And that must be how Texans feel when they come to New York and they're like, look, Jews. They're wearing the hats and everything. I can't. Now, you want to go to a cool city, go to Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'll tell you why. That's right. In Ann Arbor, Michigan, you get caught smoking pot in public. It's a $25 ticket. That's it. I heard that. I went straight to the police department. I said, here's 150 bucks. I'm here for the weekend. Oh, thank you, potheads. Now, I believe marijuana should be legal to treat a variety of medical conditions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like if something's a bummer. You gotta smoke. Because we know it's not bad for you. We know it's cigarettes that are bad for you. And we can tell the difference. And the difference is, you'll never see an anti-pot smoking commercial with one of those neck hole guys. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why? Because his friends would have made a bong out of him. That's why they would have... Putting weed in his ear, lighting his nose on fire, forget it. It's, no, it's the cops, hide Eric, hide Eric. <laughs> Miss, what's your favorite brand of condom? Do you have a preference? Do you have any brand loyalty on it? Trojan, right on. Can I ask you another question? Is this your card? <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know whose card that was then. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the commercials, Trojan has an ad campaign for the fire and ice condoms. Have you heard? It's fire and ice condoms, a condom that heats up. Oh, that's right. It's got some kind of Chipotle action happening on it. Condom that heats up. That means there's a market of people thinking, I love safe sex, but I miss the burning sensation. Is there any way? Combine those. I bought them. I did. I did. I tie them around my knees before I go to the gym and let the soothing relief penetrate sore muscles. They make 
flavored condoms. How depressing is that? Flavored condoms. Let me give you some re relationship advice. If you're in a relationship where you're using condoms for oral sex, here's a tip. Fuck someone else. Fuck a different person. <laughs> it's not meant to be. You know what they should make? They should make flavored condom wrappers. Exactly. How many times have you been there doing this? God damn it. This thing. <laughs> now you open up, you're like, oh, oh lemon lime. What's going on there? Okay. So a little personal stuff. Uh, I am a single guy. Uh, I'm single and I'm 46, which means I'm ready to cut a deal. <laughs> People ask me, what's the main difference between dating in your 40s and dating in your 20s? And here's what it is. Even if I get lucky, even if I get laid, while we're doing it, I might sustain an injury. <laughs> a torn ACL. An elbow could dislocate. That doesn't happen to a young guy. They tell you you're over 40 and you're having sex and you get that leg cramp. Get out of the room! Get out of the room! Come back with a banana, hurry, please! <laughs> Get it. I don't need protection, I need potassium. I'm seizing up. I'm... <laughs> no. I'd like to settle down eventually. I'd like to have kids one day. But just for the one day, because you're very annoying. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. I hate to think I missed my chance to be a deadbeat dad. I'm gonna let that go. But some people have cool kids. This friend of mine, they just had a baby. The kid's got an extra finger on one hand. Pretty awesome, huh? Here's how I get the news. My mother leaves me a voicemail. Judy just had a beautiful baby girl. But it has six fingers on one hand. Don't say anything. Click. I said, well, the, the finger's on her hand, right? Yeah, the finger's here. That's a problem. Unless she wears glasses. That's good. I'm the only one who's excited about it. I think that kid's awesome, right? Get that kid a guitar. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Bonk. I don't know. I think that's good luck. Think about it. That kid is going to win every argument that starts with first of all. <laughs> you think you got it wrapped up, she'll hit you with an in conclusion. I'm like, what? So uh, if I gotta go, I have a massage appointment I don't wanna miss out on, it's uh, my aches and pains. Here's another thing I tell you, when I go for a massage appointment now, I don't want any funny business, okay? I got aches and pains. I don't want any of these places where they give you the old rub and tug nonsense, okay? If I go for a massage and I see your hand moving below the belt, I'll smack that hand away. I'll tell her I'm here, you wanna give me a happy ending? You fix my rotator cuff. A hand job, I can do that when I get home. It's probably how I hurt my rotator cuff. No, I think about it. Hey, you guys have been awesome. My name's Joe DeVito. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Lori Palminteri is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Yo, we're going to keep this going. It's a funny night. This is her TV debut, Laurie Palmateri. Love it. Thank you guys, thank you so much. I recently moved to Queens. <laughs> yeah. When I moved there, my mom was really worried about me. She was like, Lori, make sure you take all your gold jewelry and hide it. Just in case somebody breaks in and steals it and sells it for drug money. I was like, don't worry mom, I sold all my gold jewelry for drug money years ago. <laughs> I thought when I moved, my life would be a little bit more like the television show Friends. I didn't think it'd be a lot like the show Friends. I just, I thought that I would have friends. <laughs> I love it here in New York. I was walking down the street. There were these two homeless crackheads. And the one homeless crackhead just turns to the other and he goes, Damn, that girl's fine. And the other guy goes, Yeah, but she's got no booty, yo. <laughs> 
And the other eye goes, eh, I'd do her anyway. I was like, thank you for pity fucking me, homeless crackhead. That's what I need in my life right now. I'm gonna call my mom, tell her I met a nice man. I've been drinking a lot of wine lately. I don't even really like wine that much. It's my least favorite of the alcohol family. I'm a beer person. I love beer. Yeah. But I feel like I can't drink beer every day because then I'll get a gut. And I feel like I can't drink liquor every day because then I'll be an alcoholic. But I feel like if I drink wine every day, then I'm just a sad white woman. <laughs> it's not so bad. We have a book club. <laughs> We watch a lot of Jennifer Aniston movies. <laughs> I started teaching Zumba. Yeah, not like for real, I don't have a certificate or anything like that. I just invite people over, we take shots of Fireball and dance. <laughs> Do it on a Tuesday, call it Zumba. <laughs> My dad's always really worried about me. He thinks that no matter where I go, someone's gonna try to rape me. I try to reason with him, like, Dad, don't worry about it, I can take care of myself. But he's like, no, Lori, you understand. You understand what goes on in guys' minds. You're very naive, I know this. I think my dad's a rapist. <laughs> So I maced him. <laughs> My family, they're very religious. I'm an atheist myself. Anybody else here going to hell? I was a closet atheist a long time because I knew my family would be really upset when they found out. And they were. My daddy was like, oh my God, Lori, this is terrible. We all thought that you were a lesbian, but this is worse. <laughs> But recently, my dad came around a little bit. He was like, Lori, I don't care if you don't want to be Catholic, but I want you to have God in your life in some way. So I was like, all right, I'm thinking about becoming Muslim. And he was like, no, go back to atheism. <laughs> I, told, I told my boss that I'm Muslim, just for the sheer sake that in the middle of the workday, I could pretend to pray, but actually take a nap. <laughs> He called me though, he did. He was like, Lori, I'm pretty sure you're not facing the right way. And I was like, that's Orthodox Muslim. I am Protestant Muslim. And he was like, I'm pretty sure the blanket's supposed to be under you and not on top of you. Someone's been watching Homeland. <laughs> And I know it's really cliche to say that the next generation is gonna be the worst generation, but I am pretty sure that the next generation is gonna be the worst generation. And I'm not defending people my age either. We are a shitty group. We are not bringing that much to the table. My entire generation is like, we all have HPV. <laughs> That's our contribution. But the next generation, they're gonna be worse. There was a 14-year-old girl, she found an arm, and instead of calling the police, she tweeted a picture of it. Her mom saw the tweet, called her up, and she was like, hey, you need to call the police about this body part that you found. Which I'm pretty sure is a conversation she never thought she had to have. Because what kind of a kid finds an arm and goes, ooh. Selfie! <laughs> She's like, hashtag zombie arm. She's holding the arm, high-fiving it. She's using it to get an extended selfie. She's like... <laughs> so another story in the news about a young girl in Russia who sold her virginity for $27,000. $27,000! And they were saying how terrible that was and how controversial. And I was like, is it? <laughs> is that so terrible? Because I'm pretty sure I gave mine away for two beers. <laughs> I 
I paid for the first one. I was like, you want this? Two drink minimum. I went to the doctor for my annual three-year checkup. He asked me if I was on birth control and I was like, yes. And he was like, what are you using? And I was like, I just go to Walmart and watch parents with their kids. <laughs> I was in the store, I had no idea what was going on. There was a mother with her young son and he was rolling around the floor. So I just took out my cell phone. I started rubbing my ovaries with it. <laughs> I did get smart though, recently. Now when I hook up with guys, I use reverse psychology on them. I encourage them not to use a condom so that they will use a condom. <laughs> Used to be the other way around. I always encourage to use a condom and they try to be sneaky and get it on without it. So now I'll be like, you know what? Don't worry about it, I do this all the time. <laughs> I'm a surfer. I went surfing last summer in a bikini, which I almost never do, because sometimes when you surf in a bikini, your boob pops out. <laughs> yeah, it does happen. Got out of the water. A mother was upset with me because her young son had seen it. And I was like, honestly, I'm a little bit upset because I think your son owes me a dollar. <laughs> or two beers. <laughs> Thank you, guys. My name is Lori Palminteri. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Kevin Ryan is taking the stage when we return. Woo! This next comedian, Kevin Ryan, I met him in Memphis at the Blues Festival. Kevin Ryan! Thank you. Thank you. Fucking Sinbad, everybody. I, uh, I, uh, I'm celebrating, I just celebrated my one year anniversary of living in New York. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Some people say it's the greatest city in the world. I got spit on the other day on the subway. Has that ever happened to you guys? It has, yeah. I've asked that question a couple of times. The answers I've gotten back are, oh my God, that's disgusting. I've gotten back, yeah, it's New York, that can happen. And I had one lady who was like, yeah, I spit on people. <laughs> I, I want to blame New York, I do, but I can't because he was a crazy person and there's crazy people everywhere. Could have happened in any city across the country. And you learn quick, taking public transportation in the city, when you see a crazy person, there's two things that everybody does. You turn the volume on your headphones up and you look the other way. That's all you have to do and you're fine. Worst part about it, when this guy spit on me, we were stopped. Yeah, and he got off the train. And then as the doors were closing, he spit back on the train. Yeah. So there was a big pulled away, there was nothing I could do, I got anger issues. So I jumped up, I took my jacket off, I threw it on the ground, and I was like, you son of a bitch, motherfucker! And then I realized, no one else on the train saw him spit on me. So he just turned me into the crazy guy on the train. He was like, tag, you're it, motherfucker. <laughs> the guy next to me turned the volume up. He's like, this guy was cool a minute ago. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. <laughs> I'm 28, I'm single, and I drink a lot. It's where I'm at, it's where I'm at. And like, I'm, I'm in my 20s, so everybody is dating on apps. Everybody in their 20s dates on apps. If you don't know what they are, you download an app to your phone and single people come across your phone. It's awesome. One of these apps recently changed to where you can find single women within less than a mile of you. No, that's too close for me, I'm sorry. And I found this out because I was drunk at a bar and I was on one of these apps and I was going through and I saw this girl, Ashley, that I really liked. I'm like, oh, she's cute. And then it said she was 900 feet away. <laughs> So I found myself just stumbling through the bar like, Ashley! <laughs> Turned into the creepiest game of Marco Polo I've ever been involved with. 
She's the one that got away. I gotta, I gotta stop drinking so much. I gotta stop smoking cigarettes too. I, uh, I was born in the 80s, I grew up in the 90s. I don't remember a lot of people telling me not to smoke. The only thing I do remember in my elementary school nurse's office, there was a poster and it had pictures of animals smoking cigarettes. Doesn't make any sense. There was like a dog smoking a cat, a frog. And at the bottom it said, it looks just as stupid as when you do it. Yeah. Now I don't know if anybody's ever seen an alligator smoke a cigarette. But it's pretty fucking cool. I guarantee if you went to the zoo right now and saw an alligator smoking a cigarette, he's wearing a leather jacket and getting a hand job from a girl alligator. With those tiny little arms. <laughs> if they wanted me not to smoke as a kid, they should have just showed me like a, another, they should have just showed me a picture of myself, overweight, balding, smoking a cigarette. And I would have been like, I want nothing to do with that guy. Get him out of here. I, uh, I'm 100% Irish. I, I grew up with a lot of Italian kids though. And I have one problem with my Italian friends. They always try to convince me that they know people in the mob. Every single one of them. I was watching a mob movie the other day with my buddy and he leaned in, he's like, yo dude. Back in the day, they used to call my uncle Joey the Wrench. I'm like, yeah, he's a fucking car mechanic, you asshole. He's a manager of Pet Boys. I'm falling for that shit. And I'm Irish, I can't do that. I can't be sitting there watching TV and a Lucky Charms commercial comes on. Like, yo, you see that dude? Just like my dad. Sure, drunk and thinks a bunch of kids are trying to steal his shit. <laughs> I, uh... I've worked a lot of bad jobs in my past, as most people. Uh, worst job I ever worked was I worked for my family. Has anybody ever done that? Yeah. A lot of people work for my dad, huh? Weird. Weird. Wasn't that big of a company. Uh, I think the hardest part about working for family is knowing when and how to quit. Because like, if you worked at a regular job, you can march into your manager's office and be like, hey, kiss my ass, I quit. And just leave. I can't march into my dad's office and be like, hey, dad, suck my dick and then go back to my dad's house and be like hey if you need me i'll be on the couch bring home more cereal <laughs> it would be weird second worst job i ever worked with is i worked at macy's the department store yeah hated it hated it I, customer service is tough people would just come in and i would just judge them immediately like they would walk in and be like, hey man, do you have this shirt in a large? And I would just be like, I hate your fucking face. I hate it. <laughs> Maybe outside of Macy's you're cool, but inside here, I hate you. <laughs> Hardest part about that job was getting the job. It was a group interview. I don't know if any, I, I didn't even know they existed till I was on one. I walked in, they were like, Kevin. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. They're like, we're gonna interview you and the other candidate out for the job at the same time. I'm like, all right, let's do it. They're like, it's gonna be you and Greg. I look over, Greg's just a better version of Kevin. That's all he is, just a... <laughs> Greg's wearing a full suit, a tie, and carrying a briefcase to a job that requires us to fold clothes. <laughs> and the guy's like, before we get started, does anybody have any questions? And I was like, uh, yeah, what the fuck does Greg have in the briefcase? <laughs> Did you bring folded samples from home? Is that what's in the briefcase? But I needed a job, so I'm like, all right, let's go. So he sits us down in a small little room, it's Greg and it's me. And he goes, okay, Greg, first question. Name three things about yourself. And Greg, being the douche that he is, is like, I'm smart, I'm hardworking, and I'm a fast learner. <laughs> and he's like, okay, Kevin, same question. And I was like, uh, what fucking Greg just said? I don't know. <laughs> it's not fair that you asked him the questions first and he stole all the good answers. <laughs> Anytime Greg said something, I felt like I was on Family Feud. I was like, good answer, good answer. <laughs> this kept happening. I was doing terrible in the interview. So finally, I'm like, who cares? So he goes, okay, last question, Kevin. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> this is my time to shine. I'm going to get the good answer. And he goes, what is your biggest weakness? And I was like, I don't know. Group interviews? <laughs> I still got the job because like my dad was the one interviewing us, so like I still. <laughs> I, 
I, I recently had to go to a hospital in a bad neighborhood, and I don't know if anybody's ever had to do that, but don't do that. That's a, that's a bad thing to do. And when I got there, I had to wait four and a half hours because I got there the same time a gunshot victim got there. And I was sitting in the emergency room, I was sitting next to the gunshot victim's family. And the cops were there and they were interviewing the family. And they were like, who would want to do this? Was he in a fight with anybody? Would anybody want to hurt him? And everybody had the same response. They're like, I don't know shit, I don't know shit, I don't know shit. <laughs> so the cops leave, they're gone for two seconds. The one fan member looks at the other family member and he's like, it was fucking Rodney who shot that motherfucker. <laughs> Those two guys get up, they leave. 40 minutes goes by, then over the intercom, I hear gunshot victim coming in. First name, Rodney. <laughs> now I'm sitting next to Rodney's family in the emergency room. And the cops are there, and they're like, who would want to do this? And I'm like, I know, I totally fucking know. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. You guys have been great. Have a good night. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Shang is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Some funny stuff. We're going to keep this going. I've been knowing this brother for a long time. He got a new one-hour special coming out. Shang. One name like Sinbad. Shang. Yeah, yeah. See, I love when the crowd got this kind of energy, so I try a joke to see what kind of crowd you are. And if you laugh at this shit, you're a bunch of sick fucks, and it's a good thing. In fact, let me ask you a question, man. Well, you're right in the plaid kind of gay shirt. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You think that women who are pregnant, if they use a vibrator, do you think their kids come out stuttering? All right, think about that. <laughs> He's like, I, 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 I don't get it. That, 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 that joke makes no, 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 no sense. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. I got to speak to the women. Now, women, I'm on your side. I think you need to do some more shit in your life. For instance, express yourself sexually. You know what I'm saying? Yes, express yourself. Like when I'm with my girl, I love it when she talks dirty. How many men love it? That's great when a woman talks dirty. Ain't that the shit? And I was talking to my girl and I was like, hey, baby. Ooh, talk dirty to me. Come on, baby. She's like, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to talk dirty. Like, come on, talk dirty, talk it dirty. She said, I don't want. And then I said, come on. She said, okay. And she grabbed my ears and said, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and yes, I masturbate, goddammit. Every man masturbates. Look at you shaking hand. He doesn't. Yes, he does. When you're not around, he sneaks like a fucking child and touches himself. Why do you think the shampoo's always low at your house, huh? That's why they call it head and shoulders. I'm trying to teach you something. I love touching myself, and if I run out of lotion, I go right in the kitchen, grab some mayonnaise. I give a fuck. Whatever, whatever. A sandwich is a sandwich, but a handwich, that's a meal. That's what I'm talking about. Look at my forearms, lady! I love touching myself. And sometimes women think I'm a chauvinist. See, I, I, I am a chauvinist. I just don't want you women to think that shit. Because you women are amazing. You outlive us. You outnumber us. You're smarter than us. You can birth life. You can bleed and not die. That's some hardcore shit. No, any other animal, if it bled all the time, it'd fucking die. You women bleed. You grab some cotton, jam it in there, and keep it moving. Like, I got shit to do today. Pow! And you're outside yelling at the neighbor, what the fuck are you looking at? I don't know why I'm crying, but my nipples hurt and I want some chocolate, motherfucker. I want some chocolate. You better get back in your house, I'll kill everybody in that bitch, I will. If the purge was real, you'd be dead tomorrow morning, bitch. Why am I so swollen? Now this is a creepy part of the joke. <laughs> Look at the women. Yes, I think there's more creepiness coming. What's with the low string hanging out, ladies? No, there's a, shut up, there's a low string. What is that, in case ninjas attack you? Oh, you fuck with the wrong bitch. <laughs> tam chucks, I call them tam chucks. Not noon chucks, tam chucks. Cause you women are amazing. I gotta give you props again, women are amazing. 
You can have multiple orgasms. Women, that's a magic fucking power. You can come more than once in a row without cracking a rib or busting a blood vessel in the back of your head. It's like you're retweeting your pussy to all your followers. It's like, oh, retweet. It's amazing. You can just keep coming like, oh, wait, I came. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I came. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I came. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. And after a while, the guy's like, get off of me. Get off of me. You're showing off, all right? You're already in the end zone. Quit dancing. Because when a woman has an orgasm, it's the most beautiful thing on the fucking planet. And they can come more than once. Man, one time, that's it. Look at the brother like it. Look at Django. Like, look, man, I don't know what the fuck you talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We come once, it's done. It's like, Aah! And now, a word from our sponsors. <sighs> Whereas in women, oh, when a woman has an orgasm, I'm just saying, it's the most beautiful time in the world. <laughs> women, when you come, you look like God sent light down to your face. You look like you were dipped in unicorn tears. <laughs> Did I say you? That was some pimp shit I just said right there. <laughs> that was some pimp shit. Look at a woman have an orgasm. It's beautiful. It's just, oh, wait, I'm almost there. Oh, 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 oh. The C's start healing. The Obamacare website starts working right. Shit gets beautiful in the world. Now, ladies, look at your guy when he comes. Look at the women. I, I don't want to do that. We look like we're changing into something else. Like the moon hit us the wrong way on some underworld shit. We look like, oh, baby. Oh, I love you so much. It's so special. Oh, my God. Happy birthday to me. No! Wet towel. I need a wet towel. (laughs) And for all you women that got the wet towel joke, you're a good fucking woman. Because all you women that bring a, bring a dry, crusty towel, he's allowed to choke you the fuck out. After a man blasts his man gravy off your chest cavity, you're supposed to grab a sham wow and wash him off. <laughs> and there's certain shit I shall teach you women before I go. Oral sex is a pinnacle part of a relationship. Any of you women that don't give head, I got a little message for you. Die, bitch, die, bitch, die. Kill yourself. You are dead to me, Fredo. Are you serious? I don't like sucking dick. You better or you'll end up on that show Hoarders. <laughs> Women are like, I don't want to eat that. You eat all kind of other weird shit. Chitlin, sushi. So you'll eat fucking sushi, a dead fish, but you won't suck on the pole of life? Are you serious? <laughs> the shaft of existence? Look at the men, I did not realize my dick was the shaft of existence. But when you break it down, that's exactly what my dick is. The shaft of existence. <laughs> Look at your brother like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna name my dick. That's... <laughs> what you gonna name yours, man, with that plaid shirt on? <laughs> Billy, I'm just gonna name it Billy. And it's gonna wear a little helmet and it's gonna ride in a little yellow bus. <laughs> Hello to Billy. You'll never sit in the fucking front again, will you? Uh, you're turning red like a mood ring. Look at you. You know what? I mean, I've, I've got to tell you something. One, I do a little weird shit, and I, I appreciate it. I'm glad you sick motherfuckers laughed, and that's a good thing. My name is Shang. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. Stay tuned.
time for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Everybody was funny. There was a lot of knowledge. We learned a lot of stuff. You got one hell of an education right here. You got one. You'll never wear that shirt again. You'll never wear that. He will never wear that. Women, you learn stuff. You learn oral sex. You're going to die. You, you learn. Shane taught a lot of things. I learned things. I learned things from, from Lori that her father's a rapist. Let's bring the comics up. Let's bring all the comedians up. Sing a song!